evening. Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm pretty good. <laughs> good. I see you had an outing today. <laughs> yes, Lord, it was hot. I didn't want. I didn't get to watch it. I just clicked on it. I heard you I, uh, fast forward. I heard you say it's hot out here or something like that. It's hot. Yes, Lord. Yeah. It's not even summer yet. Mm -hmm. well, we had a nice Texas Saturday. Heat. Huh? The good old Texas heat. Yeah. We had a nice 73 degrees with rain, but you know, it was still nice. Now, tomorrow yeah. it might be 30. <laughs> oh, wow. Nah. Well, it will do that here. <laughs> But I don't know what it's supposed to be tomorrow. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get nothing but heat from now on. Mm -hmm. Too hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh? I said too hot, Texas. <laughs> yeah, it is hot in Texas. Mm -hmm. All right. So we on chapter 18. And it is the crest theory of the Holocaust. And yeah. shit comments. Um <laughs> in one second. Okay. And post. Oh, I'm so hungry. You ain't eat dinner? Mm -hmm. Huh? You ain't eat yet? Um, I had a bagel this morning, and then when lunch came around, I wasn't hungry. And then I had a lot of water. I had a pimento. I put some pimento cheese on a piece of bread, mm -hmm. and I ate that. And... I think I need to eat something else. Yeah. But so far, I figured it out. Yeah. Um, okay. So I dropped the link in the chat in case anybody wanted to hop up while we reading this chapter. But chapter 18 is the Crest Theory of the Holocaust. She wrote this in 1980. So it says, heretofore, the description of the Semites of the Jewish religion and the gypsies of Europe have been presented as a confounding puzzle. Well, there is an answer. Horrendous, yes, but not all, not at all difficult to understand. And the implications for Black people are profound. The New York Times, June 8, 1980, in an article entitled, Brandis to set up Institute on Causes of Holocaust reported. Brandis University will establish a research institute to study the case of the Holocaust, the 15-year period in which more than 6 million Jews were killed in Europe. By autumn, the 32-year-old Jewish-sponsored but non-sectarian uh -huh. University expects to have a dozen junior and senior researchers at work planning conferences, lectures, and articles on the period and the approximately 150 years of events leading up to it. As important as they are, we are no longer we no longer need any more collections of memoirs by survivors. Pictures of concentration camps and research into the mechanisms of Hitler's final solution for the Jews, said Marva H. Benstein, president of the university. <laughs> What's needed now and in the future is an attempt to account for what happened, to explain why, and to give some insight into future events if possible. Author's emphasis. Mr. Bernstein said the institute would be financed by a 800000 grant from Dr. Laxos Tubler, a surgeon in the Washington, D.C. area and survivor of a forced labor camp in Hungary. It will be the only institute of its kind in this country, Mr. Bernstein said, and the only one outside of Israel 
where the Hebrew University in Jerusalem has a similar study group called the Hand of God. Unlike that research institute, which concentrates on the Holocaust years 1930 through 1945, the Bradius Institute intends to look at the broader range of Western European history from about the time of Napoleon's emancipation of the French Jews in the first decade of the 1800s. We cannot bring them back, Dr. Tubler said, of the estimated 20 million civilians, Jewish and non-Jewish, who died in Nazi labor and concentration camps. But I would like to see people educated in the realization that it can happen anywhere, anytime, again. Mm -hmm. Whereas I am not an invited scholar nor a petitioner to attend the Tubler Institute at Brandeis University, I have been a student of anti-Semitism in um, Europe and the destruction of the Semites of the Jewish religion since the mid-1950s. Throughout that time, I remain convinced that the treatment of the Semites of the Jewish religion in Europe and in, in America was intimately related to the gradual destruction of Black people as well as the millions of Native peoples found on the Americas by the immigrating whites from Europe a pattern which continues to be present. Further, I was convinced that the final solution for the Semites in Europe was associated with the atomic bomb solution for the Japanese people in World War II, and that the anti-Semitism of Europe and America was intimately related to the apartheid of Southern Africa and to the historic pattern of treatment, mistreatment of all the peoples classified as non-white or non-Aryan peoples by the peoples who classify themselves as white or Aryan. One of the serious flaws in Western logic, thought, and scholarship is the failure or inability to see things as a whole. Rather, the tendency is to perceive fragmented abstractions that are never united as one. This pattern of thought is sharply contrasted to the Euro to the Eastern mode of thinking and perception that begins with the perception and analysis of the whole so as to place in accurate perspective any parts or fragments which may be isolated from the whole. The focus on the destruction of the Semites of the Jewish religion as an abstraction outside of the context of the totality of the historic Western civilization and culture imperative the past 2,000 years at least explains why there has not been to date a comprehensive understanding of the Semitic destruction in Europe from 1933 to 1945. Indeed, the Tabular Institute at Brandeis University will not find the answers it seeks. The $800,000 grant notwithstanding, with the limited historical perspective of only 150 years of history of Semites in Europe. Sometimes, at deep unconscious level, people do not really wish to find answers to problems that they obsessively complain about, even when that problem has caused the death of 6 million people. There is the conscious awareness, perhaps, of the need to know the whole truth, and to understand in depth, but below this surface, there is more powerful need to maintain the status quo, which death knowledge and awareness will explode in volcanic fashion. Specifically, I am referring to, perhaps, an unconscious need on the part of the Semites of the Jewish religion, and perhaps other Semites as well, to avoid confronting and therefore understanding their entire historic experience amongst the whites in Europe. In addition to their prior experience with the whites while they need while they still resided in Africa 2000 years ago. However, I have no such unconscious need. To the extract contrary, I perceive the existing chaos and injustice on the planet Earth to be of such horrendous magnitude that this global evil needs to be broken asunder by the surfacing of deep knowledge and insight so that the true calm of a greater justice can evolve and prevail. It is just as when a volcano spews forth, 
the molten materials from its core, the soil upon which the ash falls becomes enriched and more fertile from that which subsequently springs forth. This essay, then, is for all Black people and for others who wish to understand the destruction of the Semites and Gypsies in Europe between 1933 and 1945. It is a presentation of the critical dantum that will totally clarify once and for all why there was anti-Semiticism in Europe and why a final solution for the Semites as well as for the Gypsy population in Europe was needed. It is necessary at this point to reiterate the key issues of the crest theory of color confrontation and ra racism, white supremacy, the white supremacy, white survival necessity is to establish, maintain, expand, and refine the power. <coughs> mm. Yeah, right? Yeah. Mm. Equation white over non white. White power over all people with an ancestral history of substantial melanin and skin pigmentation that can be genetically transmitted. The white genetic phenotype can be maintained on planet Earth only through this means, invasive genetic watch. The implications of the Crest theory are that all behavioral patterns in the global white collective begin and end with the conscious and or unconscious consideration of white genetic survival and the controllery consideration of the global threat of white genetic annihilation by the non-white majority. Were this not the foremost consideration of the global white collective, a white population would not exist on the planet Earth. It would have been succumbed to white genetic annihilation and therefore never would have been organized psychological and military defense. So, what does all of this have to do with the mass destruction of members of the Jewish religion living in Europe and the phenomena of anti-Semiticism? First, much confusion has arisen because of the conscious and or unconscious insistence of mixing a discussion of religion with a discussion of race, specifically as it concerns the Semitic population that practices the, the Judaic religion. This population migrated from Africa and has resided in Europe for the past 2,000 years. The Holocaust in Europe was the end result of the long-standing dynamic of anti-Semiticism. Semite refers to a racial group. Thus, anti-Semiticism was a dynamic directed specifically against a group with a distinct racial genetic background, which incidentally practiced a particular religion. A Semite is con conventionally defined as a member of any of the people whose language is Semitic, including the Hebrews, Arabs, Assyrians, Phoenicians, Babylonians, etc. Webster's New World Dictionary. The adjective Semitic is defined as one of character of or like a Semite or the Semites. Two, designating or of a major group of languages of Southwestern Asia and Northern Africa related to the Hamiac languages and divided into East Semitic, Arcadian, Northwest Semitic, Phoenician, Punic, Aromatic, Hebrew, Modern Hebrew, etc., and Southwest Semitic, Arabic, Ethiopic, Amharic. Webster's New World Dictionary also informs us the prefix semi, akin to hemi, and all of that mm -mm, means half, as in semi diameter. Thus, both of the words semite and hemite, the latter from the Greek hemite, could refer to people who were black, but a mulatto type mixture of black and white. It combines thereof, hence semi or hemi, half black and half white. Much like the present mix or colored population in the U.S. or wherever white males have sexually aggressed against African black females, a fine example is the Roman white soldier's sexual aggression toward Af to 
against African women. In my decoding, the word Semite is a as from the Latin prefix semi means someone whose ancestry was black and white mixture. Therefore, black, since black is genetically dominant. In the Washington Post, May 4th, 1979, in an article entitled Pope to View Poland's Black Madonna, Sylvania Foe reports, the mysterious Black Madonna of Chachoshawak is the most sacred icon in Poland. It is also one of the most haunting and beautiful works of religious arts in the world. Pope John Paul II, a strong advocate of devotion to the Virgin Mary, will travel to the Hilltop Monastery in June to show his special devotion to the strange painting depicting Christ's mother as a black woman. Art experts believe the Madonna was painted between the 6th and 8th centuries and say the style is reminiscent of early Egyptian Christians. Many art historians believe the Madonna is one of the rare black Madonna still existent. Most of the Madonnas painted in the earliest centuries of Christendom were black, according to historians, and it wasn't until the Renaissance that it became popular to give the mother of Christ the feature of a Floridian maiden. The features of a Floridian maiden means the features and coloring of a white woman. Thus, religious and art history support the fact that the Semites were black people with highly esteemed personage of Jesus and his mother as evidence. In the diaspora of the Semites of the Jewish religion after the Babylonian exile 2,000 or so years ago, Semites left Africa and went to Europe. With continuing genetic admixture with Europeans' white population, Operating under the definition that a Jew is anyone whose mother is a Jew, it is possible if enough white males had sexual intercourse with significant number of Semitic or colored women for the once black population of Semites to become progressively lighter and lighter. All offspring from these white males and Semitic women of the Jewish religion then would become Jews. Over 2,000 years or 100 generations, the population that was once black became significantly lightened. Just examine how relatively light in color black peoples in the U.S. have become after only 20 generations of white male sexual aggression against African black women. Just think what we could achieve in 100 generations if our goal was to become lighter and lighter with each generation. Using the well-known formula, Don't marry anyone darker than yourself. Hmm. It is significant to this discussion that Karl Marx, 1818 to 1883, another Semite of the Jewish religion, had such dark skin that his children called him the Moor, meaning, of course, the Black. Robert Hellbroner, in his book, The Worldly Philosopher, states, in contrasting the appearance of Marx with his co-worker, Frederick's, Ingles, they were very much opposites in appear- appearance. Marx looked like a revolutionary. His children called him the Moor, but his skin was dark and his eyes deep set and flashing. Prior to reading Hellbroner, I always had been impressed by the great similarity in appearance of Frederick Douglass, the pre Civil War black orator, and Karl Marx. Frederick Douglass was the offspring of a black woman and a sexually aggressive white slave master, thus himself a Semite or a mulatto. Another Semite of the Jewish religion who was identified as a black was Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, 1879 to 1955, the great Nobel Prize physicist, as documented by Robert Clark's Einstein, The Life and Times, was once described as 1.76 meters tall, broad shoulders with a slight stoop. His short skull seemed remarkably broad. His complexion is swarthy. Webster's New Dictionary defines the word swarthy as having dark skin, dusky, dark. Synonym C, dusky. The same dictionary defines dusky as one, someone dark in color, shadowy, swarthy. 
Two, lacking light. Dusky suggests a darkness of color or absence of light, verging on blackness. Swarthy and tawny are b both refer only to color. Swarthy suggesting a dark brown verging on black. The Encyclopedia Britannica described Einstein as a young man, not very tall, with a wide and long face and a great mane of crispy, frizzled, and very black hair, sprinkled with gray and rising from the lofty brow. His nose is fleshy and prominent, his mouth small, his lips full, his cheeks plump. This was a description of Einstein in his middle 30s. Crispy and frizzled hair is one half step away from kinky hair. Again, we see in the person of a most prominent Semite descriptive features that are associated with the genetic stock of the African continent, swarthy dark, swarthy skin, and crispy frizzled hair. Now, we now come to Sigmund Freud, 1885 to 1939, a Semite of the Jewish religion born in Austria a physician and a psychiatrist and founder of Psychoanalyst. In July 23, 1979, Time Book Review of Freud, Biologist of the Mind, entitled Did Freud Build His Own Legend? Frank Soloway revealed Sigmund Freud idealized Hannibal. So much that for years he was psychologically unable to enter Rome because Hannibal had never set foot in the city. It is interesting that Sigmund Freud, a Semite of the Jewish religion, should identify himself with Hannibal. Hannibal was a black man. Encyclopedia Britannica states <coughs> Hannibal, 247 BC, North Africa, um, 182 BC. Lisbia, Bersinia, now Turkey, one of the great military leaders of antiquity, commanded the Carth Carth Carthaginian. Carthaginian forces against Rome in the Second Punic War, 218 to 201 BC. After the Romans declared war in 219 BC, Hannibal, at the command of a force of about 40,000 and a member of elephants, and a number of elephants, crossed the Crenius into southern Gaul. From there, he executed an incredible fear to military enterprise, proceeding across the Alps into northern Italy. In 27 BC, at the Battle of the Lake Trestamine, he inflicted one of the greatest defeats suffered by Rome. I have quoted the above sources extensively because there is a significant reason why three of the greatest Semitic thinkers of the Jewish religion have been described as dark in appearance or have identified themselves as in the cause, in the case with Freud, with blackness. Freud even went further into his last work, Moses and Monotheism, written in part while fleeing from the Nazis to describe the founder of the Jewish religion, Moses, as an Egyptian, meaning, of course, a black man. Each of these represent representative Semites of the Jewish religion either has identified himself or has been identified by others with blackness, primarily because the Jews in Africa 2,000 years ago were black African people. That is the reason that all of the earliest paintings of the Madonna and child, Jesus and his mother, were a black Madonna and child. They were Africans. The modern day, highly misconducted Semites of the European experience may, may want and may have wanted in the past to forget their black ancestral heritage and suppress this truth. But the global white collective has never forgotten this critical fact. Always, the white collective, consciously or unconsciously, must remember this fact in relationships with Semites and all other peoples whose genetic history causes the whites to classify them as non-whites, if there is to be white genetic survival. 
Adolf Hitler, other Germans, and Europeans, all of whom are white, were aware, consciously, subconsciously, or unconsciously, of the greater origin of the Semites. No matter how light-skinned many of them may have been, after 2,000 years of miscegenation with the whites or Aryans, Hitler and his followers not only mandated the destruction of the Semites, but also the destruction of the gypsies. Webster's New World Dictionary defined gypsy as now, plural, gypsies. Earlier, gypsian, short for Egyptian, Egyptian, so-called because thought to have come from Egypt. A member of the a wandering Caucasian people with dark skin and black hair found throughout the world. The reader should not conclude falsely that the word Caucasian means white. Often, Caucasian is used to refer to dark skin, non-white peoples who may have straight hair. However, white means white and Caucasian means Caucasian. The reason Hitler gave for making the Semites and the Gypsies priorities on the list of destruction was that they were classified by the white Aryans as non-white peoples whose origin was in Africa. These non-white peoples were considered genetically inferior to whites, but capable of causing white genetic annihilation. Therefore, it was considered essential by those who were interested in white genetic survival to destroy those in their midst whom they believed could cause white genetic annihilation. All non-white peoples can cause white genetic annihilation because of their ability to produce melanin skin pigmentation. Hitler made it absolutely clear that his objective was global white supremacy and white radical purity. The specific fear of white genetic annihilation, while always present in the global white collective, becomes more prominent and is more frequently acted upon in times when whites have lost a war and or when there is serious economic uncertainty. At these times, the white collective feels insecure because the major props for the sense of white invincibility and for white genetic survival, their guns and money, seem to have failed. Thus, after Germans lost World War I, which was followed by politically, political instability, high-level inflation, and high-level unemployment, there appeared on the scene a dynamic spokesperson, articulating the need to destroy those perceived as capable of ultimate white destruction. In the United States, we are in such a period. There has been the loss of the Vietnam War, a war loss to non-white people, followed by political instability, Watergate, etc. And there is high-level inflation and unemployment. Thus, we witness increasing levels of activity of Nazis, skinheads, the Ku Klux Klan, and other spokespersons, such as Nobel Prize laureate Dr. William Shockley, articulating the need to get rid of black people and discussing black genetic inferiority. Some also focus in the Semites as the problem. This behavior must not be looked upon as immoral, as though it can be challenged by moral persuasion. This logic, thought, speech, action, emotional response, and perception is of absolute logical necessity for a people who historically have been in fear of their genetic annihilation by black or and other non-white peoples. The term anti-Semiticism seems, means white supremacy, racism, a holocaust, the open destruction of non-white people by white people occurs when, one, there is sufficient level of insecurity or anxiety in the white population relative to white genetic annihilation. Two, there is no longer a plan. Or three, it is considered too expensive to keep non-whites confined in ghettos, prisons, barrios, boosts, uh, what's that? Bantu stands? Mm -hmm. Bantu stand, Bantu stands. Yeah, concentration mm -hmm. camps, on reservation or on welfare. 
Holocaust also occurred when whites considered it necessary to relocate non-white peoples for labor purposes. Example, Africans being brought to the Americas or Native Americans being moved off land because whites want it. Presently, a Holocaust is occurring in the jungles of Brazil and the victims are the native peoples of the area, so-called Indians. <clears throat> the Semites of the Jewish religion always have referred to themselves as God's chosen people. However, they have debated amongst themselves the reason they were chosen and what they were chosen to do. I have answered these questions in the following way. They were chosen to help all the other non-white peoples of the world living under white supremacy domination to understand no matter how much you may mix with and intermarry with people who classify themselves as white, no matter how light-skinned you may become through loss of melanin pigment, no matter how straight your hair may become, no matter how much you may shrink the size of your nose, no matter how many doctors, lawyers, judges, professors, scholars you may produce, no matter how many Einstein's, Freud's, Marx, or Rubenstein's you produce, no matter how much money, diamonds, and gold you may obtain, if you are classified as non-white under the condition of white supremacy domination, when the hammer of white supremacy fall, you will be under that hammer. Mm -hmm. The Semites of the Jewish religion were chosen to teach a very important moral, and that is never disrespect or be ashamed of the black genetic heritage of Africa and speak up for, on up to, protect and defend their heritage, which are very light, should conditions and events ever call upon you to do so. Be proud to be black and be proud to be non-white. This is a profound lesson in self-respect for all peoples in the world. Mm. <laughs> very, Life. very good. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, I can't wait. Mm. I mean, I don't disagree with none of this she said. Thank you. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. No matter how light your ass gets you, still a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Look, when that hammer fall, you'll be if, under it. Right. If you forgot, you'll remember when that hammer fall. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we we'll don't never forget it. Mm -hmm. It's interesting times, boy. You said interesting times. And yeah, mm -hmm. reading all of this, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow's chapter should be lit. Yeah, I'm real interested in that. The neurochemical basis for evil. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. it's funny because today my son asked me, talking about, why are people evil? I was like, yo, bro, what's, I don't know, because <laughs> they want to be Mm -hmm. He's like, is that gonna happen to me? Do you want to be evil? Well, <laughs> it shouldn't happen to you. It was a choice. <laughs> what sparked him to ask that question? I have no idea. Mel's asked all kind of shit. Like one time, he was, um, he was Google searching some shit, and mm -hmm. um, he was logged into the account that they had for him in school. Mm -hmm. and he asked Google, what do we feel like for a human to die? And the uh -oh. school called me. I was like, <laughs> bro, he just, he's just curious about the world. Right, 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 right. They weren't too freaked out. They was like, oh, we just have to call because it's policy, but we know males mm -hmm. and we not worried. Are you? I was like, not at all. So mm -hmm. he asked all kind of questions all the time, and he mm -hmm. said some of the most dramatic things for mm -hmm. somebody his age. And I'm just like, all right, dude. 
You're a special one. <laughs> yeah, this could be evil. I, look, I said this should be evil. <laughs> I'm going to say this should be interesting because I was looking at the title. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Mm -hmm. That should be good. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, I mean, that wasn't nothing, but I mean, that was just start, um, yeah. white supremacy bullshit. Mm -hmm. That Holocaust was terrible. And, um, you know, interestingly enough, they don't really talk about it. The, the Jewish people in America, mm -hmm. hey, Lucene, um, they don't really say too much about it, you know. Mm -hmm. Not like you know, black folk um talk about the transatlantic slave trade, mm -hmm. and I find that very interesting. But then again, they did get reparations, so maybe right. that's why. Right. So who knows? But it's pretty decent chapter. Yeah, that yeah. shit was crazy though. The, the thing that makes me curious about Hitler and how he was able to do what he did. Mm -hmm. He couldn't have done what he did without the people being around him, helping him do that shit, and the people in society agreeing to the shit. Right. It's like, what the hell was going on in everybody else's mind that they just let this shit happen? This shit's weird, right. man. I told you I watched a, a documentary about it years ago. And that's what they were saying. And they were saying that um, a lot of the uh, people were saying that, at, well, one thing, it was like, it was like one thing led to another. But the thing about it is he did a lot of uh, good for the, you know, for Germany. Um, the educate, you know, help build the education system and a whole bunch of other stuff. And, you know, because Germany was kind of in some, it wasn't in a good state. So right. he came in and did all this good, built it, built up, did all this building up and whatnot. So it was like the way they uh, painted it, it was like it was slow. It was like step by step, little by little. And before they knew it, bam. And they was even saying that some of the citizens were just saying that a lot of things that were going on, they really didn't know until kind of quote unquote, it was became a big, a huge deal. You know what I'm saying? Because it was like, there was no way he could have done this without the consent even if it's like uh consent by not saying anything right you know other people and it just got to that point i think like it was saying like people were afraid because it, it just got out of hand with like little by little you know what i'm saying take away a little bit of this take away a little bit of that you know also at the same time making it a better you know building up the country so on and so forth and then before they knew it it was just out of control and it wasn't it was just like you know because you always hear about what they did to the jews but it the what they did to the people it was crazy it was like the country was one big cult it was sick it was like they had the teenagers who weren't jewish just the you know the germ just the other citizens they would take the teenagers uh and uh might have been preteen and teen and in these camps, they would match them up and have them impregnate each other. It was it was just ridiculous. Like, and the people didn't even know where their kids were going. They were just taking them. You know, they had all this some footage, and I was, it was a lot of other stuff going on that you really don't hear that much about. You know, we always hear about what they did to the Jews, but all the other stuff that was going on, it was. I was like, oh yeah, was a bunch of madness going on in there, huh? What'd you say, Quint? I say it was a bunch of madness going on in Germany. Yeah. yeah. There's all kind of stuff going on. You don't know nothing about it if you don't pick up a book and read it or go right. look right. at some documentaries because they don't tell the full story of the damn they Holocaust. They don't. It was crazy. I mean, it was crazy. And so at, by the time, you know, and then how they started going into the other countries, you know, trying to, to take over and then they yeah. started that war but it was like when America came in <laughs> I should laugh but it sounded so like typical in the sense when America came in and that war they completely destroyed and decimated Germany to nothing to nothing I was like damn you know it was wild I was like that was 
Wow. And I, I have not been able to find that documentary. It was real good. It was like on the History Channel. And I've seen some other documentaries. Well, looking for that one. I didn't watch the documentary, but looking for that one. But I'm not quite sure it was, you know, that one. Because it was like about three or four nights of it. It was, it was good. It was really good. It was, oof. It was like madness. Mm. I mean... Mm. All of it was crazy. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I watched, I don't know, I read the diary of Anne Frank, you know. Mm -hmm. It had little bits and pieces of different things that was going on in the mm -hmm. country besides what was going on with them. Mm -hmm. um, it was something else. If you weren't white with blonde hair and blue eyes, they Catholic or fully able, you were killed. Mm -hmm. Yes, they hit the Jews the hardest, but it wasn't just, yeah, it wasn't just the Jews. Like, they was trying to have them a completely white nation. Not sure. Yeah. What the, that shit was crazy. Yeah. And then when I, um, I seen some documentaries, it was some other book I had read that was talking about some of the stuff that I was like, nobody ever fucking talks about this. This is nuts. Right. That's the thing. It's like, you, I, I had never heard none of that stuff. Before. You know what I mean? Especially with the teenagers. Yeah. That, it was something about that, what they did with them kids, though, that really kind of it just did something to me. It was so disturbing, you know? And I'm like, they, they was kids. I mean, they were t children, you know? And they took them children out of people's homes and made them put them all in these camps and you know but they was brainwashing them at the same time you know telling them you're doing a good thing for Germany that type of thing and had them impregnating all them young girls oh it was that it was just something about that part that like sticks out in my mind you know yeah and, and then the, it, it, was, it was like a pretty. movie almost you know what I'm saying like something you see in a movie or something Ugh, yeah, it ahead. was crazy. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting to me was, you know, of course Hitler would be the face of the shit. But when you read the right. material, he wasn't the one mm -hmm. doing all of that shit. Right. <laughs> right. I was like, yo, these people is crazy. But you know, Germany does a really good job of uh explaining what type of fucking savage they come from. Mm -hmm. And um they frown upon that type of behavior. So, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully, you know, at least in Germany, history won't repeat itself. I don't know about, like, the United States. I don't know what the fuck gonna happen here. We still won't tell mm -hmm. the truth about shit. Man. So. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Especially working in the schools, I'm like... This is this some this I don't know what the future is, but it's it's wild, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, because it's man, that could be that's a whole nother conversation. I'm like, if they this is, I feel like it's by design, and I'm like, this is not um, just happen chance. You understand what I'm saying? No, none of that stuff just happens. Things ain't no telling what the hell these people got going on. Okay, <laughs> and plan. <laughs> right, hey, hey, there is no telling. In, I don't know. Americans mm. are silly. Mm. Uh, like uh, y'all arguing over dumb shit. Mm. Uh, I don't give a damn about no this one or that one. The government is corrupt. Okay, mm -hmm. the whole motherfucker. Mm -hmm, right. All of it is corrupt. <laughs> uh, be concerned as an American. I don't care about your conservatism or your liberalism. Right, uh, the right. government, <laughs> the whole shit is corrupt. Right. Nobody cares. Okay, y'all right. right. <laughs> and so no they come on you not caring. So by the time they look, bring that hammer down. You be no, Lucy, like, I Will? don't. And where did they where did they get it from? Cause a lot of this stuff, yeah, I can't sit up here and say I just dedicate all this shit to memory. Somebody, I just some of the shit I read, I brain them. I got mm -hmm. other shit to do. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but, I don't know. I like to know if she's still there. 
Yeah, I I pick it up and I'll be like, ah, okay, I know now, and then I go about my business. They got it from me. I believe that shit. I believe they got. I bet. I oh, believe. I had a feeling she was gonna say that. <laughs> I believe that. I believe that America, man, America is the ghetto of fucking Earth. Britain. Okay, <laughs> and we is Britain's ghetto. Okay, they, they we do all the dirty work. We the mm. goddamn, we the foot soldiers, okay? Mm. America, America is ghetto. <laughs> the ghetto. <laughs> America mm. is, man, fucking ghetto. We like, yo, do y'all read this shit? Y'all seen the history? Y'all know that the America is, y'all talking about gangbangers? Look, we is the gang. We the thug, yeah. okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They wow. study U.S. torture methods and use it for their history. I, 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 I believe it. I believe and it. And it's funny you saying that, Lucene, because like whenever you see these movies, you know they always had like these uh, Dr. Mangala types. It's you know when they're doing human experimentation, it's always a you know a, a German you know that they go to you know or that they have employed to do all of the you know human experimentation. <laughs> That's a crazy stereotype, right? <laughs> right. Just me looking, man. I just be sitting here chilling, just taking it all in, like mm -hmm. poor, mm -hmm. poor souls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't complain when she turned into what is I already telling you it's gonna be. Uh, thank you, Queen. Because everybody want to act stupid, right? There. No, no. This thing, I remember I was sitting on a panel. Mm hmm. And of course, dudes and they fucking stats and they conversations about politics and all of this shit here. Mm -hmm. So you got some of them that's conservative. You got other ones that are more liberal. So one side is like, "Yeah, Trump was the worst," and yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, "Biden and his son, and they're doing this, that, and the third. And I'm just like, "Yo, um." Can we agree that uh both of them are doing some shit that's kind of weird considering that they're have sat in or are sitting in the seats of the highest person in the land? Can we agree? No, they wanted to fight for their side. I was like, yo, I can't fuck with none of y'all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right is right, wrong is wrong. And if you're gonna deny it just to Make your team, your side, your preference look good. Then, um, they all are corrupt, and so that means when they do some corrupt shit, then it's okay because it's your party that's in. Like right, y'all exactly. fucking weird. <laughs> right, exactly. Like they lying in your pockets, so and you gotta right, like, that. stop. They're gonna put your ass in the concentration camp with everybody else. Right. And you just gonna be happy because at least it's a re Republican doing it, or at least it's a Democrat. <laughs> right, 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 right. Excuse me, bitch. I don't live in cases, okay? I don't right. want even one of them doing it. Right. It's crazy. It's crazy out here. So, yeah, I really like this book. Yeah. She touched mm -hmm. on just a little bit of everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, Shit, I try to look up and see if anything anything else has follow up besides her work because I do like the book, but you know, mm -hmm. some of the stuff is a bit outdated, you know, things yeah. the change evolved and mm -hmm. it's not all that doom and gloom that she put out there and shit. Right. Because you, know. you know, you do have to work toward making the world a better place. And I think yes. We do that slowly, painstakingly sometimes, but yeah. we do do it. Right. Human beings don't do it. That's, you know. Hey, hey Lucy. Hey, how's can you hear me? I can hey, hear you. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> going pretty good. That's good. Hey. I thought I would hey, come up can... here for a bit. And you know, kind of talk about some stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, go for it, girl. Cause you dropping some knowledge down there. 
Well, it's funny because my my dad was really into like um uh history of war uh-huh. and mm. my sister is into uh history about slavery uh-huh. um which is kind of funny because you know her husband and her kid is you know black but you know she's she's into it more so to kind of have an understanding of like what was trying like what was really going on because you know depending on what you watch or what you listen to the perspective is always going to be slightly different yeah um but uh yeah with you know with both of them i ended up picking up and, and learning a lot about a lot of different stuff and you know there's definitely because like going to school and you learn about history they don't really you know they don't they they teach you like the very bare minimum. Yeah, because they, they can't scratch the service. They can't teach you no real history. They get accused of teaching shit like critical race theory. Like, yo, what's wrong with y'all? <laughs> well, like a a big problem when it comes to our education system, like in Texas with the whole like Holocaust thing. Yeah, I don't know if you heard about that, but them like banning the books about the Holocaust, and it's because. Yeah. The way the way that they wrote their legislation and their policies with that is that if you have a material about a certain subject, it has to have two different views. So if you have yeah. learning material that's for the Holocaust, you have to have material that's against the Holocaust. Right. You right, know? right. And and it applies to all subjects and that, you know, in a sense does kind of make sense because you you want to have a more open-minded view of things and try to have an understanding of what the thought process was on both sides. Yeah. But there becomes a problem when you're talking about elementary level kids. Right. You know, when it comes to kids in elementary school, to me, I don't think those are appropriate subjects for them to be learning anyways, because they don't have the mental capacity or the ability to truly grasp or understand what was happening right. during those times. Because it's not like they're, they're simple things to explain. You know, they're really, right. they're, they're really complex issues. And you've got to have the emotional maturity to be able to understand those issues because kids are really impressionable. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's like, I don't even understand why they have books about the Holocaust and shit in elementary schools anyways. <laughs> you know, that's, that's not really an appropriate subject to be learning at that age. Right. Like, you know, obviously I'm against, like, I'm against the Holocaust, of course, but you know, it's, it's just one of those things that kids at that age can't really comprehend anyways. And right. because of how impressionable they are, you know, you could end up leaving a bad impression on them. Right. Yeah, it is very strange. Here in Texas, I went and I looked that up because I kept hearing, oh, critical race theory, critical race theory. I was like, what the fuck is that? that is yeah critical critical race theory was developed like back in like the 60s and 70s and it was a tool that was created to be used by um people that were studying law right for them to be able to find racial discrepancies in in certain laws and policies but Mm -hmm. somebody decided to take that concept take that tool and essentially misrepresent it and misuse it and so you know when you take a tool and you don't use it properly you know you end up causing injuries because of it like you know just like with any other tool you have to be trained and taught how to use it and so you know when it comes to critical race theories none of that shit belongs in any of our grade schools because that's not that's not what it's meant for. It was never intended to be used that way. So I can understand 
them wanting to take it out of schools. But I also think another problem, too, is that a lot of people truly don't know or understand what it actually is and what it's yeah, meant to be what used for. And it's causing, like, a ton of confusion and chaos. <laughs> it was. It was a lot of it. Because I was like, first of all, what the hell is a critical race theory? And I went to go look for it. And I looked it up, and I found out that this is something that they teach graduate-level college students. And I'm like, what are they talking about? This is in schools. So then I go researching the schools and all of this stuff, and that's when I find out. Um, I've not found any evidence of it being taught in school. I've seen a lot of people accusing folks of teaching it, and I've seen one dude, he was in... I can't remember if this guy was in Texas or if he was in Tennessee, but he taught two subjects and in his social studies class, they were learning something that had to do with race. And he was teaching a math class in some part of what he was teaching in his social study class got into one of the slides of his math class. A student saw it, took it to their parent, parent got upset or whatever. And the, you know, just like you said, the policy is you always have to pull up an opposing view. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. He put an article up um, that somebody had wrote about how horrible Trump was. And so when the parent complained or whatever, um, they called him to the office and they were just like so what is another material that you could use to bring a different perspective as it pertains to Trump and this man said there is no material out there that I could have put up and I was like see that kind of shit right there gives people ammunition yeah and not only like, that but it's like you know why are politics in, in school anyways you know like yeah, yeah, you're teaching social studies, but social studies is literally social studies. Like you're supposed to study the the um, social atmosphere and behaviors of of people, you know, and how that's how that's changed. You know, mm-hmm. it's not to talk about you know our you know our political views. Yeah, on that's our, on our government, like doing. that's not what social studies is meant for. Social studies is meant to study social behavior throughout history yeah. in modern times. That's, that's what exactly. social studies is supposed to be. <laughs> that's exactly what he was doing, pushing his political agenda in the classroom. And I was like, see, this stuff right here is what get these folks ammunition to say what they are. But he was teaching on a high school level. So I was like, why couldn't you just follow the damn policy? Because in my personal opinion, I don't necessarily think certain topics, I would say junior and senior level are too uh, aggressive for students at their age, especially if they're going if they're going to be college bound. I mean, it's, because- not, it's not even something that they need to be learning anyways, because you know, it's these kids are trying to prepare to be thrown out into the real world and they need to be focused on giving tools and and education that they need to prepare them for the real world like you know teaching them about taxes get when they you know how to get a job when they get a job how to interview for the job like teaching them like home ec you know stuff like cooking and cleaning and you know, teaching them about like, you know, shit like that shit to, you know, how to, how to get an apartment or a house or how to buy a car, or like how to look out for scams, like shit like that, like shit that's actually important at that point in time, because when it comes to politics and, and political views, it's an opinionated point of view, you know, that's someone's personal opinion and preference to look at things, you know, they're going to see things how they see it. And so trying to, you know, impersonate that onto people, especially when they're trying to prepare to go out into the real world, is kind of the last thing that they need. You know, they need to be able to form those opinions themselves. 
And that's why I was pissed that he didn't follow the district policy because I know going to college, you can form whatever opinion you want as long as you can provide the proper documentation and supporting details to have that opinion. And in order to do that, you have to be able to look at and analyze information that is opposite of what your thesis or subject matter is about. So if you were preparing children to go to college, then why would you sit up here and tell these people there is no other article you could have put out there to oppose the article that you put up for Trump? You yeah, are you know, crippling. <laughs> you crippling them because you know it's people that love Trump. Shit, you can find an article and then say, "Hey, here's this article. Here's this article. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, analyze both of them and give me your paper or whatever." To just put it on one uh thing, you you pushing your own ide- ideas and views and all of that. Right. right. But, yeah. Yeah, but then they like, oh, CRT, CRT, and then I go look at all these people that, like, he should have been fired. He didn't necessarily teach CRT, but you, you not following the policy, and you, you indoctrinate children with your bullshit, so you, you need yeah. to get out of here. But everybody else that I saw that was being accused of teaching it, they weren't teaching CRT. They was just, they were trying to teach actual history yeah, and it's they were pushed into to, yeah something yeah. Kind of, so now they like scared to teach history and shit cause they go, and I'm like why is everybody acting a ass over something that's you not gonna even get taught this shit in undergrad you <laughs> this is right like a lot of the shit you usually end up having to learn outside of the education system anyways because mm-hmm. you know they can't they, they can only tell you so much because obviously they have to keep it appropriate for school. So they can't really go into a lot of the more graphic details or finer details of what happened at that time. And plus, you know, like t- teaching and talking about racism and, and, you know, slavery and all this other stuff, it is important. Like, we, we need to know these things because without us knowing these things, you know, it's it's doomed to repeat itself. Like, we've seen this time and time again throughout history that, you know, when we didn't, you know, learn these lessons the first time, they ended up repeating themselves and happening again. Like, kind of like with the whole, like, you know, you know, the virus and the Spanish flu. Oh, that yeah. whole situation. Yep. It's literally the same situation that repeated itself because we didn't learn the first damn time when it happened. <laughs> like, you know, what when are we gonna get a clue here? Maybe the next time. Because <laughs> we didn't learn it the next time. <laughs> and you know, it's like I mean, there's so much shit in, in schools that's just I don't know, it's 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 a weird time to be alive because to me one of the biggest issues that I see is that you know we have two dominating political parties in our country and both of them just like refuse to actually sit down and have conversations about shit like they refuse to look at you know both sides like nothing is ever black and white there's always going to be that gray area Yep. And so, you know, if you can't acknowledge or talk about that gray area, then, you know, there's there's really no issue to be discussed. But in order to solve these issues, you have to talk about them. And you have to also, at points, put your pride down and admit that you're wrong. Like, you're just... You're just wrong. Like, you know, you can sit there and scream and cuss at somebody and call the names all you want to, but mm-hmm. all you're doing is just making yourself look like an ass. You're not actually proving anything here, you know? Right. I think, mm-hmm. you know, both sides, both sides have their extremes, but both sides also have their good points as well. And there's some, there's a lot of people that aren't either left or right, but it sucks because... When it comes to being a Republican or a Democrat, 
you kind of have to go with their agenda because if there's any aspect that their agenda you don't agree with, they pretty you much fuck. disown you. Yeah. Yep. And it's it's ridiculous because it's like, you know, that that's not how shit works. <laughs> At all. It's right. like I used to be affiliated with the party. I was like, I'm not affiliated because I don't agree with no hell. And that knocks you out of being able to participate in certain things. And I'm like, you know what? I'm I don't I don't have time for none of this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. I cannot align with just one of you. Because I might not feel like you the best person for the job. Maybe the person on the other side is the best for the job. Right. And I should be able to make that decision without you know, being called a traitor or whatever the whatever terminology yeah. that people are gonna use. Snowflakes, liberals, like yeah. you know, all this other shit. And it's like, you know, well, you realize that you have to live under the same roof with this person, right? Like we all live in the same country together. So you're either gonna have to find either come to some type of solution to get along <coughs> or this country's gonna go to shit real quick. Because the whole reason why we have our different political parties is it's a balance. It's a check and it's a checks and balance system. You know, it's to make sure that we still hold a lot of our core values, but at the same time, we're not allowing those core values to hold us in the past. Like we still have to be able to progress into the future. And so, you know, having those two, you know, Democrats are more progressive and republicans are much more conservative and it's not a bad thing it's a good thing because it keeps us from becoming you know so freaking conservative that we're you know <laughs> we're progressing faster than what we can keep up with right we end up losing a lot of our core values but we don't want to be too conservative because then we end up stuck in the past, and we never end up progressing into the future. You say? I so agree we, we gotta agree. have we gotta have a balance, and you know, right now it's we instead of people fighting for it to be balanced, people want to fight for it to be one or the other, and it's just it just doesn't work that way. You know, it, it's bad if we if we're too far Democrat, and it's bad if we're too far Republican. Yep, but everybody's lying for their power and whatever they believe in. It's it's weird. Yeah. I just be like, I just live here, okay? <laughs> like, I, I mean, there's here. there's a lot of issues that I I agree with on Democrats, and there's a lot of issues I agree with on the Republican side, but. The one thing I can't agree with either or is the fact that they both refuse to have conversations with one another. You know, if you're just, you know, if it's all, all putting all your eggs in one basket or losing everything, it's kind of like, well, you're just stupid. <laughs> yeah, no logical person does that, you know, right. they, they put their eggs in multiple baskets. So then if one basket, you know, fails, well, they didn't lose all their eggs. <laughs> right. You know, that's kind of how it's supposed to work. So if you're putting all your, you know, political opinion and thought process into one thing, well, when that thought process falls apart, you're going to lose everything that you had. And it's just something you're going to have to acknowledge and realize. And we just have that issue with, like, everything. Like, especially in, like, in Florida right now. The whole situation with Florida. And, What's happening in Florida? The whole don't say gay bill. <laughs> the yeah, whole thing on that. That? So essentially it wasn't it wasn't originally called that, but the bill was proposed to be um essentially to where if schools schools essentially weren't allowed to talk about um, sexuality and gender topics in schools okay. essentially the problem with it is that the bill is way too vague you could oh, literally okay. because of how it's written you can interpret anything as being about you know sexual identity or gender like mm -hmm. literally anything 
And so it's it's way too vague. Like, it would be one thing if they actually sat down and said, you know, there's certain aspects of it that we don't want talked about. But that's not what they did. They literally just said anything that has to do with, you know, sexuality or sexual orientation or gender. Like, that's all, like, that's not allowed to be discussed. Right. <laughs> at all. And it's like, but, and because of that, you know, if parents find that the school district is doing that, they can sue the teachers or the district. Ah, and it's like, okay. you're, you're being way too vague. Like, you got to be specific because you can't just sit here and say that, you know, you absolutely can't talk about this at all. Because one, that's censoring. You know, if you're going to sit here and preach about freedom of speech, then, you, you know, then you can't sit here and pick and choose what, what speech you, you want free and what speech you don't. Right. That's not how that shit works. <laughs> right. You protect all speech or no speech. That's how it works. And so the problem is that it's way too vague. The other huge uproar about it is the fact that, you know, with Disney getting involved and sticking their nose in it and... Honestly, I don't understand how anybody can support Disney when it comes to this type of stuff. Everybody knows Disney is fucking terrible. Mm. I mean, they push sexuality and fetishes and bestiality and grooming and slavery and racism and all this shit in their stuff all the time. They always have, they always have oh, cis, yeah, straight people in their cartoons and shows and movies, they have no representation for for that community whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, they're the ones sitting here teaching young girls that, you know, in order to be happy in life, you have to go out and find a man who, you know, is super handsome, who makes a ton of money, who has this big house and this big fortune, and you have to change yourself to make yourself perfect for him. And yeah. if you don't accomplish that, then you failed in life. Like, that's, right. that's their expectation. And I've always had a problem with that because I'm like, that's not a realistic expectation. Like, you know, we, we sit here and complain about, you know, why these girls or why these women thinking up that they're, you know, princesses and that they deserve guys that are a higher value than them. Well, Look at the fucking media you made them consume. Right. <laughs> Where did you think they got that ideology from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it didn't just come from thin air. They, got they were from raised Disney. and conditioned to think that way. <laughs> yep. You know, it's, it's the same shit with guys, you know, like with guys with a lot of the um, Disney Channel cartoons, a lot of the female led cartoons, when you look at them and you look at how the women are portrayed, in a lot of those cartoons, you know, yeah. they're looking for women who have, you know, really Those. small waist, who yep. are thin, who mm -hmm. have long hair, who have big eyes, like, you know, are yep. either re are fragile, like, you know, like the whole, like, goth girlfriend fetish. Yep. Look at every single fucking Cartoon Network cartoon. Every single one has what? A goth chick. <laughs> hmm. They got. They all got a goth chick in them. Like that's that's, you know, kids have been growing up being conditioned to think that way, and then when they become adults, that's their expectation of themselves and the world around them. Right. And then we sit here and complain about it, and it's like, well, where do you think this stuff is coming from? Like it's pretty obvious where they're getting it from. But right. yet you guys still continue to sit here and support this shit. <laughs> and then be mad at them as to like, you know, why do they act and think this way? Why do you think? Just look around you. It's kind of obvious. Yep. I agree with everything you've said. <laughs> I really do. It is crazy. It is interesting where we live in right now. That's for mm -hmm. sure. That is for sure. Yeah, like it's it, it's a weird time to be living in right now. Like it's very 
it's just weird to me how it's like, you know, a lot of the issues we're having are so obvious as to why we're having them, but yet we don't want to acknowledge that. Like, we, we just don't. Yeah. I think you know? a lot of people, are, they confuse, you know, you see the world is changing and then you want the, the old way of things and new generations have new ideas and they're not doing the old way and everybody's going to force everybody else to do what they is. Girl, look, chaos. Yeah. Like, I'm going to just mind my beef. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's like so much social conditioning that we have going on and people just, they just don't realize it. Like, you know, like I said, they sit here and wonder why people act the way they do or why the way they are or why the way they think. Well, think back to when you were a child. What type of books were you reading? What type of cartoons and TV shows were you watching? What did you see on the news? What did, what type no. of movies did your parents have you watch? Like, you were influenced by all of that. And they purposely, especially when it comes to shit for kids, they purposely design it in a certain way to condition you to think and act a certain way. Yep. It is definitely in the media. That's that is absolutely true. It's definitely in the media. I saw it a lot. Well, the first time, um, like the the Disney cartoons. Let's see. I grew up with uh, what's what's the girl name? Uh, the Little Mermaid and Snow White and all of them. And I used to look at them. I think it was like two of them that I liked, but the rest of them I didn't really like. And I was like, why is Disney so popular? Like, why? And somehow I ended up finding some documentary that told me about the earlier versions of these uh, fairy tales the or whatever. The stories of them. The yeah. original stories are fucked up. But. At the same oh, yeah. time, the original stories are authentic. Like, they're genuine. They're real. Because in a lot of those stories, they don't end up with Prince Charming. No. You know, they end up being left for dead. They end up getting killed. They end up, you know, being abandoned. But those are more realistic life lessons to where they're teaching you, hey, you can't, you changing yourself for somebody else isn't going to make that person like or love you. Right. <laughs> Like you know, the brothers like green. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. But Disney took that concept and flipped it on its head and they essentially send the message of, you know, if you want a guy or if you want to be happy in life, you have to change who you are for them. Yeah. Like if you look at every single Disney princess movie, that's literally the message that they send you. And but it's so subconscious. Like nobody sits there and watches it and thinks of it that way. It's a very some, subconscious message that they're sending. Or that some man is going, this prince charming literally is going to come rescue you. Yeah. And no, he's not. <laughs> no, that's that's not how it works. But, yeah. you know, that's the media that we were shown growing up. Yeah. And so I that's why they... you have so many women out here wanting way high value men men that are way above their value and these women will go out here and you know they do the hair they do the nails they you know do the waistliners they're getting plastic surgery and botox and all this other stuff and people are sitting here like why are women doing this and it's like well they've been conditioned to think that way that was the program and that's why they're doing it mm -hmm. and Disney, um, yeah, I came across a documentary that was showing like the older versions of the cartoon. Yeah, they promoted a whole bunch of crazy shit. They was promoting drugs and prostitution and homosexuality, and it's all in the imagery of different shit. I was like, yo, that's crazy. So when I was young, I was like, yo, I don't really fuck with Disney like that. <laughs> Disney's weird, and 
Like, people are watching this. Like, parents is literally sitting their children in front of the TV to watch this shit. It's like, they're being programmed. And, I mean, I see it now as an adult. And even at my age, I see women my age, and I'm like, you still have childhood programming all over you, and it's just a tragedy. Yeah, you it's kind of like... Yet. It's kind of like with the whole obesity problem in the U.S., you know, like we, you know, we talk about it a lot about, you know, how people need to get more control of their weight. Well, here's the problem. The U.S. has purposely manufactured its food like all of our food is genetically modified to be sweeter. Like, all of yep. our fruits and vegetables have a lot of sugar in them. So even if you eat just fruits and vegetables, guess what? They're still full of fucking fat. sugar. Everything has carbs. You know, everything, well, everything has a of sugar has in the, it. Um, like, everything has the, uh, that high fructose corn syrup in it. And they, they yeah. showed a documentary about that, that I think they introduced that in the foods, like, in the 70s. And, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, as they do all things. And that's when it people's weight started to uh, same foods. People were eating the same stuff. You understand what I'm saying? But once they put that in the food, people's just weight just you know it started to increase. Yeah, it's it skyrocketed and yeah, you know the fast food chain shit. Like hell, you got a McDonald's on every other fucking block, and they're surrounded by Burger Kings and Taco Bells and and, and that's no food way to now. get true genuine like fresh food here in the u.s it's not a thing and it even even that here. food even that food and and those those like some of those chains you just mentioned it's not the same as even when i was a kid it's not the same it's saltier you know um i've noticed lately like chips crackers that me and my daughter normally eat you know when we eat them we've noticed they're saltier you know uh, it, and it just doesn't taste the same. It's just like it's not it's not right, you know. Yeah. And it's not even just like those fast food places. It's even no. some of these it's restaurants that we everything. go to. It's like this is you know. It's a, it's not literally right. everything. Like the way mm-hmm. the way our food is handled and processed. You know, our our food safety standards are way below other countries. The fact yeah. that we still have recalls for food that have been contaminated for shit, for a first world country, honestly, that needs to raise a lot of red flags. Because you have countries like Europe and, and Japan and, you know, Australia, they never have those issues. In Japan, you can eat raw food and it's safe. Because they have such high food safety standards to the point to where you can eat raw eggs, you can eat raw fish, you can eat raw pork, raw beef, and it's safe. You won't get sick from it because of how they handle and process their foods. Well, not I, here in America. We must put all the salt and sugar and all the bad things because we need you people to be addicted so you will continue to buy and consume because that's what you have to do to keep the economy floating under a capitalistic a capitalistic system. You gotta keep people buying shit. And if people are right. not addicted to the food, like, they may not go buy it. Would you would you be surprised if I told you that pork is not supposed to be pink? No. no I, beef is not supposed to be red. You know that pork it's isn't a, supposed to be pink. Pork is supposed to be like a deep red marbleized color. Hmm. It's not supposed to be pink. It's pink because it lacks all nutrients. There's there's no muscle fiber, no fat. It, it's it's all fat. It's super fatty meat. That's literally all our pork is. In grocery stores, when you get your meats at grocery stores, rinse your meats off. And I guarantee you you're going to find spots of mold, spots that have that have started that were exposed to air and started to turn brown. Because what they'll do is that when those slices of meat, and I, I worked in these departments, when those slices of meat get close to expiration date, what they'll do is they'll take them in the back, they'll take them out of the packaging, and they'll dip them in blood, in fresh blood, so they look red again. 
and then they repackage it and then they put it back on the shelf and they'll do that four five six times till they run out you could be buying meat that's like you know over a month old disgusting and you, would, you would have no <laughs> fucking idea you have no clue you wouldn't know any better <laughs> like it's it, it's how our system is set up and rigged it's literally it's designed to make us fat it's designed to make us lazy it's designed to manipulate us to give us unrealistic expectations like we're conditioned to think the way that we do like it's not it's not rocket science we right. have an obesity problem in the u.s because uh-huh. our food standards are shit <laughs> You know, if everything wasn't so full of fucking sugars and fats and carbs, we wouldn't be fat. If we didn't have a McDonald's on every other block, if we didn't make it to where Americans have to be dependent on vehicles, you know, said if we built more bike lanes and more sidewalks and, you know, fewer highways and more public transportation systems, people would walk more. They have to because they can't use vehicles as often. Yep. No. And I know the food standard is shit because I, when I lived in Europe, oh my God, I remember we went out to eat. I got, I ordered some spinach. Oh, uh, woo! I haven't had spinach that tastes like that since I was a really young child. I was like, this is what spinach is supposed it's to taste right. like. And this right. was very normal for them, and nobody could understand why I was so excited to eat it. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, because our our food standards here suck, you know? Like, even the fruits and vegetables you buy, no, they're terrible. They're literally full of freaking sugars. When's the last time you had baby carrots? Those things are sweet as a motherfucker. Like, (laughs) they're so sweet, I don't even like to eat them. I'm like, carrots are not supposed to be sweet, they're supposed to be bitter. Like, an earthy taste. They're not supposed to be this, this sweet. Like, what the hell? Because they're they're genetically modified to be full of sugar, and they do that to all of our they do that to all of our food, all of it. Yep, they really do. It is interesting, but everybody wants to argue about which side is better. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, when you're talking about the system as a whole, neither one is better. We're all part of this system and we're all falling right for its own trap because we're too busy arguing about bullshit instead of, you know, actually looking at the system that's literally trying to fucking kill us. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, this is exactly it. <clears throat> so, like you say, in interesting times, I'll just wait for the chaos to paint out. Hmm. Hopefully to be sooner than later. <laughs> yeah, hopefully people will finally, you know, kind of start to realize that, you know, it doesn't matter who's in office, whether it's Biden or Trump, they're not the problem. Like the whole system itself is the problem. They're just the puppet sitting in the chair. Yep. They're not the actual thing that we need to be fighting. <laughs> right. Out of those things. Like, we shall see. So yeah. Well, I thank y'all for being here. Thank I have you. to jump off of here, but we'll be back tomorrow. Chapter nineteen, is it? Yes. And it is the neuro. What? Uh, neurochemical. Neuro. <laughs> Chemical basis for evil. For evil. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a real good chapter. Yeah. That's good. So, thanks to everybody that came through, enjoyed the stream, watched. I hope y'all click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow, 6 30. Yeah. Central, 7 30 Eastern. And y'all stay dark and lovely. We're spreading a little light. We'll see y'all next video. Peace.